I have and still do mentor uh, a lot of women younger than me, and I probably, at one time or another, did pass along one or all of these pearls of wisdom. Hello and welcome back to Silver and Sensational. I'm your host, Jessica Lynn Verdi. Silver and Sensational is a show that's helping you live your most empowered and self-sufficient life. And our wonderful, sensational host is Lois Mills. And you know my opening sentiments are, it is I... Lois, and welcome back, and thank you so much for tuning in to us. Lois. Yes. Today is, is, is a day for you to shine, I think, and really share with us um, some things that you've been thinking about. And, you know, there's a lot of things on the internet, things I would say to my younger self, things I would do differently, um, five things that contribute to my longevity. And today we're focusing on, you know, face. let's face it, we all have things that we wish we had done differently. And so we're focusing on certain things that you wish yeah. you had, had done These differently. These are all very personal to me, but I think that they're not so unique to me. So where's the difference between, I would have been nice if I had done that, or man, I really should have. Like, like, do you beat yourself up? Or well, first of all, you know, today is about advice and not condemnation. But, you know, beating ourselves up with the woulda, coulda, shoulda isn't going to change anything because it's set. In, now, that's set, set in concrete. It's the past. It is your beating yourself is not going to change it. So... When I start thinking like that and going down that road, uh, because I think we all tend to say, oh, you know, wow, yeah, especially if we're paying a huge price now, Mm. is I have this mantra I've been telling myself. Call it an excuse. I call it a mantra. It's, you know, I did the best I could at that time, with what I had to work with. So I'd like to think that as the years have accumulated that I have learned from experience, that um, there were things that I have learned through therapy, and that hopefully uh, I learned from these maybe not so great judgments that I made. So so I think for as our audience, um, we're at whatever stage of life you're in, I think that's something big to take away is lamenting what you did or didn't do doesn't really help. But you're sharing some things that you kind of wish you had done that would improve your life today in hopes that someone else could take stock and see if that's going to affect them further down the road, things that they could fold into their life now. Um, And I'd be curious if uh, one of the things we're also, we have four different pieces of advice you would give to yourself uh, that would help you today. And what we'll look for also is ways you can still modify that, ways you could still fold that into your life personally, Lois. Well, some things are a fait accompli, you know, (laughs) but... Totally. However... Totally. um, I think I have previously mentioned that I have and still do mentor uh, a lot of women younger than me, and I probably, at one time or another, did pass along one or all of these pearls of wisdom uh, to them, and I think that um, they can really work almost at any age, but particularly if you um, are still working, which would help Mm. in the financial area. But let me get started. Before we get any further, click like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified every time we drop a new episode, which is always Fridays. So you can rely on that. And leave a review wherever you listen to us on your podcast. Advice number one, do learn to play a 
decent game of golf or tennis, as well as bridge or mahjong or another activity that creates a community for you. Wow. Why would I tell you this? Because you will be invited to join in those activities because you are a desirable doubles for fourth, same thing for a game of golf, same thing for a table of bridge. And I found this out and I am suggesting to anyone out there who's on the younger side, and I'm going to say from 18 to 65, okay? Because you, for many of these things, you do need some years to get good. Ah, I this love is that. The reason you can't do it at any age. Yes, you can, but you do need the practice and experience of doing these activities for you to become good. And it's only if you're good are you invited wow. to do these things. Wow. So, as an example, I wasn't very good at playing golf. And, you know, it. I was not asked to join a group going on a private plane to Scotland for a golf outing. Oh, my God. Thank you. So I would have I, felt sick to my stomach. I felt, yes. And again, some of these things, if you've listened to all my uh, all of our broadcasts, you would know that I moved from Chicago to Palm Beach, Florida, not knowing anyone. Well, it turns out I could have uh, been invited to join a golf club if I played golf. At that time, I hadn't really, you know, I putted around with it, for, but can't say that I would have been able to participate in any games because I wasn't good enough. I, I mean, I, I, let's just say I didn't play golf. Is this before or after after that asshole pro guy told you you'll never get good? This was uh, This was before. Okay. This was before because by the time I met that great looking baseball player. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Palmer, as I recall. Um, I was already being very, very diligent about the game of golf. So, you know, I was never great, but I could hold my own. And I right. will say this in golf, you know, all you need to do is keep up with your group. That's, I was just going to say, like, maybe you're not qualified for the Scotland group, you know. But if you could keep up with your group, that's all anyone expects. Just don't lag behind. But when it comes to tennis, you know, this is different. This is, are you an A player, a B player? So right. this, you know, so there's that. And with bridge, you know, people want to know, that if they're going to partner with you, that they've got half a chance of winning. So when I moved to Palm Beach, you know, I didn't know anyone. And so not only was I given an opportunity to join a golf club, but I later found out that there was a group meeting every Monday night for dinner and bridge afterwards at a very popular restaurant. Now, if I had been a bridge player, I would have known about this and I would have had an immediate group of people that I met and could socialize with instead of being so isolated. So I will say that a lot of years ago, and I never, I, I should have listened more to what this fellow said. He technically was my boss, but he was younger than me. And one day Charlie said to me, but Lois, all your activities are solo activities. I hadn't thought mm. about it. And he was absolutely right. And so because I never really kept up with that, today I'm learning how to play Mahjong so I can play and meet new people. I did learn how to play bridge, but unfortunately, my own, you know, I didn't have a partner, the same partner, so that I didn't have the communication with another 
person that you need when you're playing bridge. Mm. And at the time I was learning it, I really loved it. Um, but at any rate, this is what I tell people because these are friendships you form and many of them will last most, you know, a lot of, in part of your lifetime. So it's certainly a way of increasing people you know around the world if you travel as well, because let's say you are, wow. you know, a Mahjong or a bridge player, you know, there are tournaments and they are held all over the world. So again, let's say you like to take cruises. There's always bridge group wow. on cruises. And uh, these are just ways to increase your circle of friends. Not everybody, you know, has to be your bosom buddy. They are people you know, people that say, let's say so-and-so lives in Paris. You're going to Paris. You let them know, I'm going to be in Paris. You're going to be there. Can we get together for dinner? Is this not a wonderful existence to have people you know wherever you go? I have two very good friends that have traveled extensively and have been involved in lots of different activities through their lifetime. And I swear to I swear that everywhere they go, they know people that they can reach out to and have dinner or do something with. So that's my main advice. And I say this, ladies in particular, don't always think that you will have that partner in your life. And you may be at a point where you don't have a partner and will need to make new acquaintances, and this will help you hmm. do that. So, yeah. I think that's very good advice and, and something I'm going to really start to take into consideration, honestly. The next piece of advice I have is, again, on a social level, and that is to join more groups with people of the same interests. And let me tell you today, with Facebook and groups galore. Hello, yeah. There is not a reason in the world for you not to do that. And again, why? For the same reason I talked about in the first piece of advice. It really pays to expand your horizons by meeting more people and having larger circles of friends. I mean, as you go through life, you know, uh, often, you know, our interests change, but that doesn't mean that the people that you've met while pursuing those interests need to change. Wow. You know, when I did a lot of not-for-profit work, some of the people have, you know, still remained in my circle of friends. Um, but I do say that today I do regret that I did not form more people in my life. And I don't have as large a circle of friends as I would like to have today. So, you know, I'm doubling up on it, if that makes any sense. It does, yes. Um, because just because I didn't do it doesn't mean I can't do it now. And so I am trying to do just that. While some things are said and done, there are ways we can still integrate in order ourselves into social situations to make up for some of that time lost, because it doesn't behoove us to go, oh, I should have done this. I didn't do this. You know, um, yeah. I, I accidentally fell into a group. I didn't know that by signing up for improv, I was going to sign up for lifelong friends. I also didn't know how important that was. So you want to be able to get out there and, and be social. And there's literally no excuse not to be. There are, as I say, the wonderful thing uh, about Facebook, in addition to being able to find us at Silver and Sensational, is, <laughs> is the fact that there are just so many groups 
that are available out there. You know, as I say, when I was highly interested in knitting, 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 I got the most wonderful friend from that, by the way, who I'm going to have lunch with tomorrow. And, you know, and I haven't been part of this knitting group, you know, 10 years. Wow. So, you know, this is, uh, this is important to do. I think that's wonderful. It expands your horizons, which expands your circle of acquaintances. It's just as much, you know, your social life is as much or as little as you want it to be. But it's non-existent if you don't have anyone to be social with. So just I, I, I smell a full episode uh, coming up in the future yeah. about that because there's so many things to talk about. All right, we're ready for advice number three. All right. I'm a real Leo boy, and I wish I had been smarter with money. And why, you ask? Well, your retirement is less stressful. Mm. Let me put it that way. And when you're 35, 40, 45, 50, 60 maybe, and you're working, and you're making money, and you've always been able, to make a buck, it's so hard for us to think that that day may come where you're not able to make a buck. I don't think we want to even fathom it. Exactly, which I didn't want to do. And I, you know, I've been working since I'm 15 years old. I've always been able to make a buck. So, by the way, if there's anybody out there that would like to support our program with some advertising, we are more than open to it. Jessica will take care of that so that we can continue to make a buck. That's right. However, saving money is really important. I mean, there's so many people out there. I mean, a person that, you know, I really respect is Susie Orman. And she is particularly great with um, people, you know, in their 30s, you know, getting them to start thinking about these things in their 30s. And uh, believe me, it is, you know, we talked about ageism in a previous session. So you can't always count on being able to make a buck. Mm. As you age, because often that opportunity is not presented to you, okay? So you may not want to think about it, but you really need to. You really need to. It's, it's the same kind of, it's, it's, it put it on the to-do list of things you need to do in addition to making sure you've got enough medical insurance, enough this, enough that. These these are things grown-ups do. Yes. And that's a, wow. That's that's what I need to tell you. And you know, sometimes I think I think I thought I was Tinkerbell or whatever, but they were things I never really wanted to address. Now, I say first and foremost, my advice to my younger self would be invest in income property. Mm. Now, with all due respect, I will say that I have been very fortunate in the profits I have made in real estate. Uh, what happened in my particular situation is my creative spirit so overtakes me when looking at real estate that I see... A project. I see a project. Right. I see a pig's ear I'm going to make into a silk purse. <laughs> and I saw it in single family dwellings and that I ended up living in and then sold and right it you know it was it was a very nice piece of change to have picked up but I say to myself now couldn't I have had that same creative spirit with a 3 4 or 6 flat that uh. I could live in one of the units, rent out the other five. Right. And after several years, if I felt like it, I could rent out that one and get into a single family home. But at this point, 
I could be getting income. And very, sure. very size of income. Yes. And, and that makes a big difference when you're not getting a paycheck or you're not billing clients. And so it's, you know, there you have that piece of advice. And another way to be smarter with money is to just buy fewer things. Because truth wow. be told, the things that are so desirable really lose their desirability once you own them. Uh, I recall from the time I was a little kid uh, riding my bicycle, I pretended it was a Jaguar. I oh, had a oh, love so affair with cars. I mean, I started my life in the, you know, my career in the automobile business. Right, right. I just had, and in that time that I'm going to say this when I was little, riding a bicycle, it was the 50s. And it was that, I mean, did I know that that long nose with the tiny behind British racing green camel interior convertible was a dog of a car? No, I just knew <laughs> that I wanted that car. So fast forward now in my 30s. And lo and behold, I am finally able to do what? To get a Jaguar. Oh, my goodness. And there it was, a Jaguar. And first they did the two-seater coupe, and then they did the convertible. This was in the mid-'80s. Oh, my God, I had to have this car. Well, I got the car. I'm going to tell you. So I had a Jaguar. So what? <laughs> the first time I drove it somewhere, some, some son of a bitch keyed every panel. <gasps> mm -hmm. So of all the things that I desired, once I got them, the glow was off. It was just having another thing. All in all, I simply have to say, if you desire a lot of that stuff, try to find something you can maintain with and maintain it well, and hopefully at least get what you paid for it out of it. It does not pay you know, really to buy a lot of cheap stuff because oh, you're only... And God, it's so, and it's so desirable to get those cheap things or you're, you oh, know... Oh, sure. Or, or you think you can buy all this shit on Timu and it's like $2 so I can get it. That adds up. And it's trash at the end of the day. I, I really try to do my best to not buy well, you know, what's going to end up in we, the trash We can. have a lot of disposable clothing, you know. Yes, uh, that as well. You know, when you start with H&M and, and Zara, and I'll tell you, I myself, I find it hard to resist because the styles are so great. I, but, but, but I have clothes from H&M that I bought 10 years ago. So it's, I think I just have gotten better with discerning, mm -hmm. you know, I'll try it on. And, and if I really don't feel like it fits me well, I'm not going to buy it. I'm never going to go, oh, I can see going to this one thing. I, I guess it, that's what I'm taking away from this advice, Lois, is like the practicality doesn't make you feel good. Am I making the right decision or am I convincing myself to buy something? I do like what the French women do. I'm ready to purge most of my closet. And I do like that they will buy, you know, they'll have one very fine skirt, maybe two very fine blouses. And that's mm. what they wear all the time. So that even, you know, the women that work in the stores that you know, you know, they're not making a great deal of money, but they're always so well-dressed because they have, they, they buy very good clothing that they Resilient wear for a clothing. very long time. Wow. And they're classic, so they're not in or out of style. And they always look so well put together. So I think that's great advice. So as I, you know, at the risk of repeating myself, I want to not to assume that you'll always be working or that, you know, you'll always have money because even if you're a trust fund baby, Investments go bad. People steal from you. 
There's, you know, there sure. are circumstances that happen in life that nobody is immune from financial distress, you know, disaster. Well, maybe Jeff Bezos isn't, but, you know, I mean, but let's talk about the rest of the world. And I had a friend who used to say, listen, money is like a ball. It can roll just as easily away from you as it can towards you. Wow. Lastly, and this is one I need to qualify, I should have attended law school. (laughs) That's a big one, Lois. It's a big one. And it isn't necessarily to practice law. Although I am a frustrated lawyer and like to say, everything I know about the law, I have learned from law and order. Ah, <laughs> However, okay, so th- so there's you, you've done some law school then, I think. Yes. So it isn't necessarily that I would have practiced law, but to be able to read and understand contracts, to know the right questions to ask the experts, it would have given me more confidence in my dealing with mm people, I wouldn't have been in a position of being bullied by professionals. And I just would have had the confidence in dealing with many of life's practical challenges. Hmm. So I know um, for many of us, the option of going to law school isn't, uh, isn't on the table. You may need to get out there and start working. Can't afford to spend another three years in school working up more tuition that needs to be paid back. I understand all of this. But I I just have to say that that's the one real regret I have. Because as I think back, being single most of my life, I've had to rely on so many professional people who Hmm. didn't always do so right by me. And, you know, professional people have their shtick too, you know. Right, that's right. So they may not always be aware that maybe they're not doing the best thing for you because they have their own hang-ups about things. Or you may represent somebody or something to them that they don't necessarily feel that they want to do the best for you. So if you can't go to law school, try to do, and there are, God, there are, like, MIT and other major universities offer lots of online courses that are actually for free that you can take so that you're not, you don't feel as reliant upon people. I'm not saying, you know, that, you know, you never consult any of them, but this will give you enough, you know, of course, there is that saying, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. That's exactly right. Yes, absolutely. And it could be dangerous, but if it gives you the uh, ability to ask the right questions of the professionals, you're still ahead of the game. So on that note, I will close out my advice to the younger me. You know, if if our listeners are a little bit like me, some of the com- some of the things you're giving uh, advice for does cause a little stress. Like, oh god, like maybe I'm not putting enough money away or maybe I did get screwed on that contract I signed. But tomorrow is another day. We're not doing woulda, coulda, shouldas. Mm-hmm. I think that's ex- so good to have kicked off saying that. I remind us now because we Life's not over. This is our opportunity to start folding in better habits so that things are just a little bit easier down the road for life, which we cannot predict. That's about it at the end of the day. Absolutely. Because I'm looking at you, Lois, and I think you're awesome and you've done wonderful things. And it's awesome that everything you did brought us here today. Do we all have a little Thank bit you. of things? It's wonderful. But Of course, there's some things that we all wish we did a little bit differently. So hopefully you could take some of this advice and fold it in. If you have some advice for us, we'd love to hear it. Something you would love. Yes, very much so. I really want to hear 
uh, from your own life experiences. And again, this goes across any age. You don't need to be a certain age to be able to share the life experience you've had and what advice you would give to your younger self. Especially woman to woman, too. Absolutely. Knowing the value of a woman in your life that is willing to share. I want nothing more than for another woman to avoid making the same mistakes I did. Also, understanding we all got to learn yeah. our own. Yeah, we you can't all, stop yeah. somebody, right? No, 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 no. And this isn't what this is about. No. It's, you know, if what I'm saying today has a certain ring to it for you, Put it in the back of your mind. Give it a little bit of thought. Right. And yep. metabolize it. I love that's that. That's all you need to do with it, you know. And if after today I have helped or shown one of you something you were pondering and or hadn't thought of before, I feel that my job has been complete. Well, so. I definitely walked away with some information, so I appreciate that. Well, you're my favorite mentee. Well, I'm, I'm trying so hard to be. <laughs> you don't um, need to try. You just okay. are. I'll let it be. Okay. Um, thank you so much for listening, folks. There's so many different ways you can get in t- contact with us. You can email any questions or insights you have to Lo or myself at silverinsensational at gmail.com. We're on TikTok now at Silver Yes, Insensational. we're very hip. We're so hip. Uh, we're on. We're also on Instagram and we're on Facebook also at Silver and Sensational. And if they're watching this on YouTube, Lois, what should they do? Oh, my favorite thing. First of all, you're going to subscribe and then you're going to hit like. And then you're going to open up your contacts and go to share and start sharing us with all the people you know, the people you like and the people you don't like. <laughs> And then do hit the notification bell so that you're made aware of when we have a new episode, although we do drop a new one every Friday. So again, thank you so very much for joining us. And if you're listening on your podcast, thank you for joining us there. And Jessica, until next week, I thank you immensely. Thank you, Lois. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everyone, and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notify bell, and please share it with your friends, and if you feel like commenting, use that box, will you?